Hi there. Welcome to this video on collisions between particles and surfaces. Now what I'll be doing is introducing you to something called linear momentum and the principle of the conservation of linear momentum where we'll be able to work out the speeds of the particles after an impact providing certain conditions are met. So how do we do this? Well, let's suppose we had a particle of mass m kilograms and it's moving with a speed of v meters per second, say to the right here. Then we have a quantity which is called momentum. Momentum is defined as the mass multiplied by the velocity. So for instance, if I had a particle of mass 5 kilograms and it was moving with a speed of 3 meters per second to the right, then what its momentum would be, let's just write it in here, the momentum would be equal to its mass 5 kilograms multiplied by 3 meters per second, giving us 15. But what are the units? Well, the units are kilograms, meters per second. Okay, we've got a mass multiplied by a velocity. And momentum, because we are multiplying by a velocity, is a vector quantity. We need to associate a positive sense for it. So we've got a momentum of 15 kilogram meters per second here to the right. Now I want to introduce you to another idea and if we take two particles, let's suppose the particles have masses m1 and m2 say, and we look at the motion before they collide. So if we just put here before and then we look at the motion after they collide and so we'll just put after here. Now these two particles could be moving towards one another or they might be moving in the same direction. Let's say M1 is moving with a speed of U1 and M2 is also moving to the right with a speed of U2. I'm assuming that U1 is greater than U2 otherwise they won't collide. But after they hit one another they're going to move off with other speeds. And let's suppose the speed final speed of m1, we'll call it say v1, and the other speed of m2 after the collision we'll call v2. Now assuming that the two particles are smooth and they're also moving on a smooth surface, we don't often put the surface in, but let's just suppose that they're moving along a surface like this and it's smooth. Then Providing there's no other external forces acting on the system, trying to restrict the movement, when they collide, we get something called an impulse. They both receive a kind of bash in different directions, in opposite directions. M2 receives a bash in this direction to the right, coming from M1. We'll call that I, I for impulse. And M1 receives an equal but opposite bash in the direction to the left. We'll again call that I. So I represents impulse. An impulse is defined as the change in momentum for a particle. It's equal to the final momentum mass times the final velocity mv minus the initial momentum the mass times the initial velocity u. Now a little bit of theory here do bear with me and then we'll start to tackle some problems. Now if I look at the impulse that each one of these particles receives let's say we look at the particle m1. We'll just put here for m1. Now when we're doing problems like this we need to take a positive sense because we're dealing with momentum which is a vector quantity. 
it relies on velocities, which are vector quantities. So for m1, I'm going to take to the left as positive when I look at the impulse, because the impulse acts towards the left. So what would my equation be? Well, the impulse, I, equals the change in momentum. The final momentum minus the initial momentum. So the momentum finally is going to be the mass, m1, multiplied by the final velocity. Now notice that v1 is in the opposite sense to my positive sense. So it's going to be minus v1. In questions like this, we really have to take care over this type of part. And then we've got minus, and we subtract now the initial momentum. So it's going to be the mass times the initial velocity. The mass is m1, and the velocity is u1. And that too is in the negative sense. Okay, So that's going to be minus u1. And if we tidy this up, it equals minus m1 v1 plus m1 u1. Now, I'm going to call that equation 1. I'm going to go on to looking at particle, the particle with mass m2. So for m2, we're going to look at the impulse. Now the impulse acts to the right, so I'm going to take for this part to the right as positive. So I'm going to get positive i. And that is going to equal the final momentum then, which is going to be m2 for the mass times the final velocity, which is v2. And that is in the positive sense now, so that's going to be m2 v2. And to this we subtract the initial momentum. So it's going to be the mass, which is m2, multiplied by the initial velocity, which is positive u2. It's in the positive sense. Now I'm going to call this equation 2. And what I'm going to do now is equate them. They both equal i. So I'm going to say equation 1 must equal equation 2. So therefore, what I get is that minus m1 v1 plus m1 u1 equals m2 v2 minus m2 u2. Well, just write that down. Minus m1 v1 plus m1 u1 equals m2 v2 minus m2 u2. And if I add this term to both sides, and I add this term to both sides, then what I get is m1u1 okay, plus m2u2, m2u2 equals, and I'm adding this term to both sides, so we get m1v1 plus m2v2. And this has got kind of nice pattern structure to it. What we've got here is the initial momentum of our particle m1 plus the initial momentum of our particle with mass m2. And it equals the final momentum of both the particles. So what we've got here is something called the conservation of linear momentum. Providing no external forces act on our system of particles, then we've got the total momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact. It's called linear momentum because our motion is taken to be in a straight line. Now this is an equation that we're going to be using when we're looking at the impact between two particles. And I've got a couple of examples here. We've got, in this first example, two particles, one of mass 2 kilograms, another one of 5 kilograms. And what we've got is, before they collide, the 2 kilogram mass is moving at 6 meters per second to the right. And the 5 kilogram mass is moving 
initially three meters per second to the right but then they hit one another and the direction of our two kilogram mass is reversed bounces back at one meter per second and what we've got to do is find the velocity of the five kilogram mass which I've marked in as moving to the right at v meters per second and in this second example which you might like to try when I've just worked through this one we've got two particles of mass three kilogram and four kilograms initially they're moving towards one another this one's moving at five meters per second and this one's moving at two meters per second they hit one another and then they move off with a speed of v meters per second and one meters per second respectively both to the right so how do we do this then well if we just take this example here we need to take a positive sense and that positive sense I'm going to take to the right purely because the final velocity here I've got going to the right so I'll put that in as positive so what we've got then is the momentum before impact that's going to be for this mass 2 multiplied by its velocity which is 6 it's in the positive sense to this we add the momentum of this particle so its mass is 5 and its velocity is 3 it's moving in the positive sense and this is equal to the total momentum after impact so we start with this particle its momentum is going to be the mass 2 multiplied by the velocity now we've got to take care here because it's moving at one meter per second but to the left in the opposite direction which I've associated as positive so this is going to be minus one and to this we add now the momentum of our five kilogram particle and it's going to be the mass 5 multiplied by the velocity which is v and it's in the positive sense so that would be 5v now I work this out we've got 12 here plus 15 so that's going to be 27 so we've got 27 equals minus 2 plus 5v and if I add 2 to both sides I've got 29 equals 5v and if I divide both sides by 5 I end up with v equaling 5.8 5.8 meters per second now if v turned out to be negative it would mean that the, instead of the particle moving to the right it would in fact be moving to the left because I've taken positive to the right so don't worry too much about your directions that particles are going to move off let the maths do the work okay and interpret your answer relative to the sign that you've got here okay well I did say that you might like to have a go at this one just give you a moment to pause the video do come back when ready and you can check your work solution against mine okay welcome back if you had a go so for this one we need to take a positive sense I'm going to take positive to the right do experiment though it's a good idea to just experiment and take it to the left you should still get the same answer the same interpretation that V will turn out to be going to the right if it comes out positive okay so let's have a look momentum before impact that's going to be the mass for the first particle 3 multiplied by its velocity which is 5 5 is in the positive sense so it's 3 times 5 to this we add the momentum here of the second particle its mass is 4 we multiply it now by its velocity now it's moving at 2 meters per second but to the left in the opposite sense here so that's going to be minus 2 and this is going to be equal to the total momentum after impact so we've got the mass here of three kilograms and we multiply this by the velocity which is positive v okay it's in the positive sense and now we add the mass here four and we multiply this by 
the velocity and it's one meter per second in the positive sense. That's going to be four times one. So cleaning this up, we've got 15 here, minus eight. So it's going to be seven. So we've got seven equals three V plus four. And if we take four from both sides, we therefore have seven take four, which is three equals three V. And dividing both sides by three, gives us v equals 3 divided by 3, which is 1, 1 meter per second. So again, it's come out in the right direction because it's positive in the positive sense here. If it had have come out negative then, it would have been moving after the impact towards the left. Okay, well I hope it's given you a brief introduction anyway to how we apply then the conservation of linear momentum to two particles when they collide. And remember, we can only apply this rule providing no external forces act on the system.